All right, hello everybody. Uh, I am Chris, that is Jessica. Um, if she knew how to cook, she'd be on this side. You definitely want to look at her more than you want to look at this guy. Nonetheless, um, thank you for ordering our part two of our Easter menu. Um, this menu was an incredible menu of discovery and research and history lessons. Very fun, uh, we'll tie all those in. I want to let you know right away that mise en place. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and crank my oven way up. Let's get it, uh, let's get it up to 500 degrees as hot as we can possibly get it. If you have a pizza oven in your backyard or some crazy stuff like that, get that thing ripping and you can do your asparagus in that. But nonetheless, we need it for uh, finishing our fish as well. Um, get a couple of pans uh, for some saute work. As always, I like my black uh, steels because they uh, kind of have a nonstick quality already. They hold retention of heat very well. Have yourself a little pot with some uh, not boiling water, just hot. Um, and then a couple little pots for some sauce work. That's about it though, so nothing too crazy. Um, we're gonna make the cocktail at the end of the video. Um, it's gonna come to you as a batch, but nonetheless, we wanted you to kind of see how we would do it. And uh, you'll notice there's two glasses because obviously Jessica's gonna drink with us tonight. Um, so I hope you guys are down to have a good night. Uh, let's get started. We're gonna start off with the nest. This is like one of the things that the staff just absolutely does not look forward to and also is excited about, if that makes any sense. Um, that is because the nest is so labor intensive. So we have this incredible amount of work that goes into cutting these King Richard's leeks. Um, then we blanch them off in, in uh, 250 degree oil. After that, we uh, freeze them. Then we rewrap them and we turn them into these beautiful nests uh, by frying them again. So as you can see, I mean, they're very beautiful and it's, uh, it's such an awesome, amazing product uh, to put out. We're very excited for it, but man, are those things a lot of work. Um, to be totally honest with you, uh, Localis is not an R&D restaurant, normally. Um, I would just come in with a, an idea in my head and we would just make it happen. Uh, throughout the pandemic, we've been able to really slow down and pay attention to things and try things. And what I've found is that I'm a huge fan of R&D. Um, not for months and weeks trying to figure out a specific dish, but just putting them into together and saying, how can we make this the best that it can be? The nest is the best that it's ever been because of that. So uh, big, huge thank yous to, uh, to our amazing staff here. Um, I wish they could be here in the video, but it's late night. Um, so anyways, let's get started. Um, we've got this beautiful five and a half minute egg. Um, we're gonna put this in your very hot or warm, warm water. Um, not very long, okay, so don't, don't, we're not cooking the egg, it's already cooked. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead in another little pot and I'm gonna get our leek sous bis uh, heating up. So this is uh, using like huge amounts of the tops, which are kind of inedible almost, texturally, have tons of flavor. So we use so many of those to make this very, very small amount of sauce. Huge flavor, high seasoning. Um, not salty, but high season. That's very specific because the egg is so rich and lush with its protein that it can coat your mouth and kind of make the dish a little heavy. And it wants that salt with the bites as you scoop it up. So um, there we go. We got the big soup beast heating up. We don't want it to be like bubbling hot. Okay, we just want it nice and warm. And uh, our egg just sitting here kind of beautifully. I'm gonna flip it over to make sure that once again, not boiling water, guys. Don't don't do that. You'll you'll end up cooking the egg. What we want is to see the jiggle come back as it firms up when it's cooked, um, or when it firms up, then we chill it and then <laughs> see. I can't even talk straight. <laughs> when we cook it, then we chill it. It firms up, so it'll get back to that nice jiggly stage uh, once it warms up to the right spot. We're just kind of waiting for that to happen, anyways. The rest is just plating, so it'll be bada bing, bada boom. Now look at the jiggle. Oh yeah, it's jiggling. <laughs> all right, so that's how quick it was. See, not very long at all. Just gonna leave that in there a little bit longer. It's actually faster than I thought it would be. Probably about a minute, minute and a half for those people that are like, how long is it, Chris? Actually, you wouldn't say that. It's kind of like that, that one movie, you know, what's in the box? <laughs> how long is it gonna take? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take my egg out for fear of uh, overcooking it. Um, little trick for you, we give you these little containers. Use a lid to hold your egg. Otherwise it goes bloop on there. Which case, if you want to know, literally rolling boil water. Don't do too many eggs. Everything has to, you don't want to lower the temperature of the water too much. So bring your eggs up to temperature as well in uh, some room temp water. 
um, five and a half minutes in boiling water directly into a uh, ice bath. I say five and a half for this type of egg when we're reheating it. Do a six minute egg if you're gonna eat it right away or if you don't care about it overcooking a little bit more when you reheat it. Because we know that we're gonna be reheating it at home, we want to do five and a half minutes. So that last little bit, um, that's why we're also not opening the egg. It's gonna be really soft and silky on the inside. So now we are going to come back and I bet you that our sauce is nice and hot. The handle of that spoon is hot, so I'm guessing the sauce is hot as well. Here we go with the plating. Sauce goes down first. You'll see this beautiful color when it hits the plate. So we're gonna drop and then drag. We can drag out a little bit more if we want to. Sometimes you gotta go a couple times, but you gotta be careful because if you drag uh, outside of your line, it's not gonna look so great. You wanna make a nice little puddle here. Look at how beautiful and green that is. Isn't that just gorgeous? I feel like we're painting a plate right now. All right. Moving into uh, the nest placement, um, use a spatula if you want. Uh, I use chopsticks a lot in my cooking. I also love to eat with them. Um, they're a great tool. So you just very gently gonna lay that off center. Okay. I'm also going to make sure we have that nice little hole in there in the bottom. Take our little beautiful egg. Set it right up in there. I'm setting it up. I'm also gonna clip the top. So if you wanna clip the top, uh, try to make, you have to use a very sharp knife. Once you get it started, just push through, make sure you're backing uh, the egg with your finger and just take that lid off like that. So as you can see, you can't see the yolk because uh, I didn't clip enough of the egg. Now it gets harder. So these are these mistakes that happen when you're trying to film something and it's live. So I'm just gonna barely try to cheat through this there's the yolk, perfect. So, you know, it's part of, uh, it's part of the gig. Um, you definitely wanna hit that with a little mold and salt right now, because it's gonna absorb into some of that liquid, that beautiful seasoning. All right, next we have this beautiful uh, roe from uh, Passmore Ranch. Uh, Michael really knows my love of extremely fresh fish eggs. Um, these are just literally incredible. I mean, the, the texture, uh, the flavor, the smell, there's literally zero smell. There's no fishiness at all. These are so beautiful. We just mince up a little bit of fennel fronds and some uh, lemon zest just to accent the flavors. Um, those are gonna go kind of across. Get some on your egg, cause it's kind of cool. Egg on egg, right? Mm -hmm. a little egg on egg love there. I think maybe the, the egg came first cause these eggs are like making sweet love, so. All right, now the onion sprouts from our friend over uh, at Watanabe Farms, Heidi and Clark. Um, they do these beautiful little um, dirt growing microgreens. I really like the idea of that. And bada bing, bada boom, there we go. That's all you gotta do. Let me get these wine glasses over nice. here. And um, we're gonna get into uh, our first wine which is uh, gonna be this really spectacular white wine from a very special region in Spain, uh, Lancorreria de Scalade. Uh, this is Les Bougers. This is Priorat, everybody. This is um, a very special place, like I said, in uh, Spain. And uh, this actually goes back to monks that came there to plant these crazy vineyards on these nuts, shill, kind of ridden shelves, almost. It doesn't even seem like a place you would grow wine, but nonetheless, some great red wines come from that place. Uh, I've always loved Priorat wines, um, but this was a white. And my friend Chris Belts, uh, who works for Winebow, came in and tasted me on this. I absolutely fell in love. And then before I knew I was writing a biblical themed menu, um, he told you know we, we found out that you know where Priorat is actually loosely translated to steps to God. So there you go. Um, the idea of the egg is very uh, prominent in Jewish culture. Uh, we did keep it completely kosher, uh, so there's no use of any other kinds of animals, uh, definitely no pork or anything like that. And I uh, thought it was really kind of cool to bring that together, um, the steps to God, and then uh, the egg. So I'll pour a little bit of this here for Jess and I, and we'll get into the second round. This is her bigger one. <laughs> I gotta continue this video, guys. I can't keep it. All right, we're gonna go ahead and set this right here. So you guys can stare at it and wish that you could eat it. But you're gonna eat it soon if you order. All right, guys, uh, mise en place for our second set. Um, we need that oven 
uh, ripping hot. This one's getting there. Um, we also need a nice pan. And uh, we'd love to use uh, another little tiny pot for our couscous. We only need one of these pans now, so I'm gonna move this over. Um, let's get the couscous going first, just because it's nice and easy. So we have uh, this beautiful Israeli couscous. Um, obviously Israel, the nation of, of God, the, his people, kind of cool. Uh, large pasta balls is what that is versus the smaller ones. And uh, we have these melted uh, green garlic stems. So these are cooked down for hours in butter. They're absolutely incredibly good tasting. Um, very low heat, guys. This is just, we wanted to, we don't want to break that butter. We want it to be nice and creamy and beautiful um, at the end. So keep that on a very low temperature. All right. Now, we've got a couple different things here. Here is our uh, piece of stable fish, black cod, from our friend Anthony. Um, he fishes them uh, off the Fort Bragg, and if he is not available, then we can hit up Sunfish, and went over there always really does a great job of bringing us in beautiful stuff. Uh, we broke down these fish, we scored the skin uh, nicely as you can see. Um, so we have that nice kind of texture on the top. And then we dried this out. So this skin is very dry, that's crucial if you're gonna get a really good crispy skin on black cod or sable fish specifically, because there's a good amount of fat underneath that skin. And if you don't render that out, it's gonna be kind of oily in your mouth and a little bit heavy. We don't want that. Uh, last but definitely not least, we have these amazing spears of marinated asparagus. Kind of weird time of season right now, sometimes Delta, sometimes California, but all fairly local to us right now. Um, still so delicious. This is marinated in this very intense rub of olive oil and lots of spices toasted. Um, that's gonna go on the plate later as a separate uh, piece, but in the meantime, let's get that. Uh, these are gonna be very fast. They're gonna be about 10 minutes, but actually the fish is gonna take less, so we're gonna throw these in right now. We want that high heat. We do not want to cook the asparagus too much. We just want to seize the outside, really get it nice and hot for a short amount of time. Uh, let's get a little bit of salt, put that onto those, uh, that top side of the skin, and let's get our pan ripping hot. Stir up our couscous a little bit. Um, you can also, if you would like, like I'm going to take a tiny bit of my little water there. everything from sticking on the bottom and get that butter melting really nice and evenly. So remember, we've done this so many times now together, but always put oil in your pan first as it's heating up. That way you know when it gets to the right temperature. The smoke point will tell you where it's at. If you don't have that in there, you put your oil in, boom, it either lights on fire or, uh, or it smokes out and changes color, maybe you know sticks to the pan a bit. Uh, none of those things are good. So put your oil in first. You're waiting for that whisk. We've got our couscous going, and we've got the asparagus in the oven right now. I am exhausted. Oh. <laughs> okay, I feel better. That's good now. So we're waiting for this to heat up. I hope you guys had a wonderful Easter. Um, I know we had a very quiet Easter. There was no family. There was no nothing. It was just us. And at first we were kind of bummed out about it. And then we were like, this is really nice. Like when have we ever been at home with our boys and our family? Like such a cool thing. So we hope that you guys, whether it was with family or not, had a wonderful Easter holiday or Passover as well. We wrote a lot about that in this menu. So this is uh, the fish is a symbol. So the story is, is that nowhere in the Bible is Christ associated with the fish symbol. Um, I've learned two different things. One was just last night, actually, believe it or not. But the first one was that um, it was just written so often about throughout time of when he fed, you know, 5,000 people with five loaves of bread and two fish. And that fish symbol kind of, you know, meant that. And then last night I heard that it used to be um, when uh, the Jews were kind of um, occupied and they weren't allowed to be free with their religion, they would uh, do a swipe with their foot and then the person on the other side would make a swipe with their other foot and that would make the fish symbol um, and that was kind of like hey this is a safe space so kind of cool whether either way that it goes i like it our pan is ripping hot 
So we're gonna go ahead and lay our piece of fish skin down away from us so it doesn't splash. Um, this is also kind of important. You really kind of want to push this down a little bit. So I'm going to use my um, chopsticks. I want to make sure that all the skin is making contact with the oil in the pan. Very important. We don't want to have pieces of our skin uh, that aren't crispy. Also, don't work the uh, sable fish too much. It's a delicate fish and you will break it apart. So don't smash it by any means. But if you can get it to just lay down a little bit better than usual, and then once it goes down the first time, it'll stay. Um, as you can see, it's freely floating. If it sticks, remember, don't freak out, don't touch it. Leave it on high temperature. Let it keep going for a while, it'll release itself. I'm gonna lower this down a little bit because it's not stuck and I don't wanna have it cook too hard. Perfect. Okay. So here's our, uh, our couscous, as you can see, um, there's no melted butter. It's all kind of just this beautiful, absorbed tastiness. Um, what are we gonna do with this couscous, everybody? Taste it! <laughs> Always taste it. We didn't season this all the way up because we didn't know what vehicle you were gonna cook with, stock or water or whatever it is. Um, we just wanted to make sure that we left it up to you. So good. Let's check our asparagus. Look at this, guys. See how we're getting that dark color and it's blistering? This is perfect. We're done. That's how fast it is, guys. How many times have you eaten asparagus that's stringy and mushy? Gross. Undercook it. Always undercook it. It's good raw. You can eat it raw. So don't overcook your asparagus. This is marinated quickly. It was in there, you can see the little bits of color on the end here where it's thin, um, the, the blistering, like I said, it's done. You, what you don't see are the long lines where it's been dehydrated too much and it's overcooked. Now we're gonna flip our fish for just a second. Get a close up of the skin, Just. It is so beautiful. Grab yourself a little butter. Let's look like uh, chefs from um, the movie Burnt. Looks so cool. And we're gonna spoon this very hot butter over the skin. That's gonna help it stay crispy. It's gonna give it gloss. And this sable fish is already a buttery fish. So when you baste it with butter, it's just even more incredible. Remember that you have to have your temperature up enough to keep the, the oil and um, butter mix hot enough to keep searing the skin versus sogging it up. All right. Um, sable fish, cook it through. Don't overcook it, I'm not saying that. But a lot of fish we would leave rare in the center, um, medium rare. This one, you, you kind of want to cook through. Uh, that's when it really has this beautiful consistency. Um, it doesn't like to be undercooked. So don't worry about uh, overcooking your fish. It's kind of tough with this one unless you really go to town. Obviously your arm would get tired if you were basting for like, you know, 20 minutes or something like that. All right. I'm just going to let that sit there. I'm going to take a little bit of this fish butter oil. Throw it in my couscous just for, uh, you know, things and giggles. <laughs> Let's get to plating. Let's lay down our beautiful asparagus. Asparagi. I don't know what you call it. You go right in the center with that. This is a good uh, lesson, you guys. Think about your fish, right? It's still in the pan. It's still cooking. Don't let it go for too long. Like try to keep that in your head. Like I got fish, I got fish, I got this, I got that. Like always be trying to think about the elements that you're working with. I'm gonna take this couscous, go right over the side here. Okay, I'm gonna grab my fish from over here. It's done now. I'm gonna rest it out just for a second. It's really beautiful, very excited. I'm realizing that I don't have something here I need. I'm gonna search for it. Just is probably gonna giggle at me as I'm looking for this thing. Definitely gonna tell the guys, hey guys, tomorrow. Um, hello. Green almond chara set, y'all. Gotta have that. All right, look at the skin. Let's get a close up of that real quick. Look at it, crispy. You can hear it. 
Very crispy, rendered well, no fat seeping out still. Really beautiful. Put that right on top of the couscous. Now we got a couple cool things. Remember I told you like hyper power flavored oil. Um, that's what this is. Look, it's almost like a paste kind of texture, but this is uh, tons of spices toasted down and ground loosely into beautiful olive oil. We're gonna stream some of that around the plate. This is an intense flavor, very intense, but it's okay. It's gonna work with the fattiness and the couscous, uh, the fattiness. Whoa, that's a serious bike. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a big flavor, but it's gonna work for this, I promise you. Um, next, we're gonna add a little bit of the green almond charo set. This is that cool, um, kind of chutney-ish, salsa, weird thing that's found in the Old um, Testament of the Bible. Um, but usually it's uh, dried fruits and nuts and wine um, together. So this is green almonds, pepitas, and off-dry Riesling. So kind of a fun play on that. I don't want to put it on top of my fish, put it on the side for texture. And then last but not least, uh, Miss Heidi, being the sweetheart she is, brought me a ton of onion blossoms. Um, we have these working right now, everybody, in a vodka. Um, so in the next couple of months, we'll be releasing a very special cocktail with our uh, spring onion vodka. So pretty excited about that. Uh, anyways, we're just gonna kind of lay these down on the plate. Just let them just pop these beautiful colors and the flavor on this is so good. Okay, so there is our dish. Very excited about that. It's awesome. Take this over here. Now we're gonna talk about this guy. <clears throat> Yannick Cadu. This is a uh, Chablis. So this is an AOC, just meaning that it has to come from, you know, Chablis as a whole. So it's not a vineyard designated uh, wine. But this guy, to me, honestly, is making the best Chablis for the money right now. Um, I've had his, uh, his first two vintages. Um, now, this is still his second vintage. The third one has come out, I've tasted it. He's on a roll, he just really knows how to make wines well. And uh, something about Chablis and asparagus, it's kind of hard to deal with. Asparagus is these big green flavors, green almond, uh, green garlic. But nonetheless, Chablis has the ability when it's right. And I really think this is right. This is one of the best uh, pairings when we get the staff tasting. Um, super good. Um, I don't mean to say this, but you have wine in your glass still. So <laughs> how am I supposed to pour this in there? I'm not really sure. How are we looking on time? Has it been like 30 minutes already? 22. Ooh, wow, we gotta hurry. Okay, <laughs> it's getting long, you guys, sorry. So anyways, uh, Yannick Cadu, this is um, Chablis, just meaning an area in France, this is Chardonnay, um, done, I think, one of the best ways uh, up there in Chablis, very clean, very crisp, mineral driven. Uh, let's get into this um, last little kind of round. It's not very much cooking, which is good, um, but what you do have to do, in um, this pot, I'm gonna take a little bit more of my water here. I love having clean water around at all times. Pot, you can always uh, reconstitute things. My uh, lamb jus that you'll have, um, rendered down too far, reduced too far, sorry. So just add a tiny bit of water, because all the flavor's there. You're just re re getting the water out of the sauce. All of the flavor is still in there. You add water, it's back to the full flavor that it was. But anyways, you have a nice piece, uh, or a nice piece of lamb here. This is roasted in your ranch lamb leg. Um, this is a giant portion because Jess and I really want to eat this after we're done with it. Um, but we're going to just lay this in there and we're just going to put this on a very low temp and just let it warm up. We're not cooking it, y'all. Like, we got to keep this just warm. That's all we're looking for. Um, so we'll get that in there on a very low temperature. Next, we're going to get a pan uh, pretty hot again. Get rid of this pan. We left the music on this time. We really wanted to kind of hang out towards the end of our week. All right, so here we have uh, some potato fondants. Um, these are cooked in the fat um, from the lamb set that we had the last two weeks. And uh, this is Bloomsdale spinach. So this is kind of a cool thing. I can't wait to tell you about it a little bit more. Uh, but nonetheless, we're gonna get our pan ripping hot. What do we do? Put some oil on it before it gets hot. Um, this one is a little different because we're going to go ahead and drop these in here right now. Um, we're not really looking to get like a hard sear on these. We just want them to warm up, so we want them early. Um, the spinach, on the other hand, needs to be very hot. you got to sear that because if you don't wait till it's hot enough, it might fall apart on you. still going to be delicious, don't get me wrong, but it won't be that same impact that we're looking for.
favorite things that we made uh, on this menu is coming up on this. It's just so good. It's a uh, spring onion tapenade. Tapenade, um, usually very, very onion heavy. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, <laughs> olive heavy. <laughs> I can't talk tonight, sorry. Um, but this one we did green garlic and spring onions melted down in the olive oil. Um, we actually put some can pop peppers, uh, found out about these through uh, Rick Minerman over there at Cordy Brothers, the most insanely beautiful, very lightly spicy capers. And then of course, fresh olives that we chunked up ourselves here. It's just uh, a different way of putting it all together under very low temperature. It turned out so beautiful though. We're very, very excited about it. So now we've got our uh, potatoes, they're bubbling. So that means that the pan's getting nice and hot. We're gonna butter these guys up too, so make sure you got butter if you don't. And uh, let's just go ahead and, so the jus is like barely bubbling right now. That's exactly what we want. We do not want this overcooked. I'm actually gonna take it off the temp now, and we'll just kinda let it chill out now. We don't want it to overcook. Emmy has been the only lamb that Localis has used since we've opened. Um, I used a lot of other lamb from a lot of other areas and uh, to represent the lamb that was slain, you know, Jesus Christ in the New Testament, um, there's no other way we could use any other lamb. It just had to be this. Um, I love him, I love his family, and their product is the best on the market. Okay, now we're ready. We got some uh, good heat going on, a little bit of wisping. So we'll throw in our spinach. We're gonna let that sear for a little while. You'll see the bottom's gonna fray a little bit, um, but this is a really cool process. Can't wait to tell you about it. I'm gonna drink my wine so I have room for the red wine coming up. Okay, so the potatoes, I'm just gonna keep flipping them up, flipping them over, um, so they don't get too much color on, on uh, one side. Perfect. Okay, so the spinach is puffed up a little bit, it's perfect. Got that nice color on the top as you can see. And now we're going to add more butter. That's what we do, right? We add butter. For the fondant really though. We were gonna do lamb fat, but um, just decided that butter would be a better vehicle and everyone would have butter. We're just spooning over to uh, heat through the potatoes. We want to make sure that the spinach is cooked through, at least uh, warm through, excuse me. All right, good to go there. So we are going to plate. So I've got my top and on. I'm going to lay that down first. Taste this on its own. It's so delicious. Taste it with the wine on its own. Um, it's really fun. Just different enough. It's still tapenade, but a little different. I think that's what we do well at Localis. All right. Lay our piece of lamb down. One for the chef. <laughs> It's kind of fell apart, no big deal. Still got most of it there, it's beautiful. We need all the rest of it. So why is this spinach so special? Um, it's Bloomsdale spinach first off, so it has great texture, really beautiful flavor. Um, these are some fried spring onion chips for you. These will be done. And then we have a couple just raw Bloomsdale spinach leaves, just to add a little bit of freshness to the dish and also a beautiful pop of colors. Um, but this is Bloomsdale spinach. We uh, blanch it in salty water, and then shock it, uh, wring it out very, very dry, mix it with uh, olive oil and butter and salt and lime zest or lemon zest, just a little bit, because I really wanted to taste real spinach. So often, the best spinaches I've had have been creamed with heavy ingredients and butters and you know all of these very heavy stuff. 
I wanted to really taste spinach, but I also didn't want the sliminess that comes with sauteing it because it definitely does have a little bit of layer that it leaves in your mouth and I don't like that. So this was a fun R&D trip that we did uh, to get this all ready for you. Got the lamb, got the tapenade, got the beautiful potato fondants, Bloomsdale spinach, dish is done. And for the wine pairing, very fun. This is uh, Vincent and Alexandre Cluzel. They are uh, up north in the Rhone Valley in St. Joseph. Um, St. Joseph is a pretty large uh, area in the Rhone, growing predominantly Syrah. Um, what grows on the hill and what grows in the valley are very different. In fact, there's talks about having separate AOCs, um, I'm sorry, separate villages of St. Joseph on the hill and St. Joseph in the valley. One says the other one isn't as good and vice versa. But nonetheless, uh, this comes to us from Pierre Close, really cool little uh, micro uh, importers, incredibly well balanced Syrah, goes with lamb so perfectly. Definitely try the tapenade with just that and the spinach too. This, this pairing to me is really kind of what pairing is about. I love it, I think it's very fun. I think you guys are really gonna enjoy it. Um, St. Joseph, also very old school, um, has a lot of biblical aspects to it. So last but definitely not least here, let's do dessert and get you guys out of here. Sorry I dragged on a little too much, but it's a special menu, right? It's an Easter menu. So we're gonna get out our dessert and we're gonna make a cocktail. So here's the cake. This is uh, our friend Kevin O'Connor. He's a good friend of mine. We've been cooking together for quite a while. And um, he just came out with a really cool book called Chasing Harvest. And uh, he has this kind of iconic olive oil cake recipe that I wanted to use to represent him and his new book. So definitely check it out called Chasing Harvest. Um, now we have this beautiful sweet olive oil powder, uh, tapioca maltodextrin with a little bit of powdered sugar and really beautiful fresh olive oil. Go across with that. Leaving ourselves a nice landing pad for our little honey pearls. Or I'm sorry, I keep saying honey because they look like honey. Um, olive oil pearls. So this is isomalt wrapped around olive oil. So kind of fun. Sweet, but also very olive oil heavy and crunchy on the outside. Really fun uh, thing that we learned to do here during this menu. Now we have this uh, green almond. These are candy green almonds. This is like a green almond brittle, so nice chunks. I'm gonna leave one for the top of my ice cream. Before I get my ice cream, there's my one for the ice cream. We're gonna make this cocktail real quick. So here we go. Um, I do gotta say earlier in the year, uh, Nick Amano came and we did a, a pairing together for three weeks. Um, he taught me a lot about bar. I got super excited to do these cocktails. And uh, now we have a olive oil wash Darjeeling gin. Um, so we whisk up olive oil and um, and the gin, freeze it, the olive oil settles after it's already imparted flavors. And then now we have a, smell it in there, it's really neat. Um, and this is gonna be one ounce. The other thing that we did is uh, juice some of those beautiful green almonds, um, which have this very tart you know, flavor. Green almonds only happen for a couple weeks out of the year uh, before the insides form, and then there's like a baby almond inside, but now there's like this jelly, it's delicious. Um, but we juiced it, and infuse that into this uh, St. George all-purpose vodka, which I think is a fantastic vodka for the price. If you see it in the stores, I think it's the really good one for cocktails. Um, this is actually going to be a half ounce, so we're gonna get that ounce and a half that we're looking for. That'll add that really big green almond flavor. Uh, quarter ounce. Uh-oh, I just almost realized something. I was only making one cocktail. Code got in trouble, y'all. Uh -oh. oh. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, add up there and another ounce of gin. Then uh, I had some. You'll have. Well, you won't have it, but I had some honey warmed up a little bit. Uh, it's important that it's warmed up so that it's more of a liquid state. But that's gonna be a quarter of an ounce, which I'm gonna eyeball because it's just for Jess and I. So. This is what we use for the sweetness, kind of harking back to the first dessert, the land of milk and honey. Um, important for me to continue striving to try, in some way, shape, or form, artistic or real or monetary or whatever, to bring peace to that area of the world. Uh, I'm going to go grab some ice.
right? Ice for the shake. Ice in the glass. Jessica's starting to look at me like, hurry up. I want my cocktail. <laughs> Try to never hit the same uh, the same shape twice, right? And then work your speed up. I'm sure all the bartenders are gonna laugh at me. That's all right. All right, beautiful. It's hard to hold the, the shaker, very cold, so that's a good sign. Strain it out. Color's really beautiful. Pour it equally, and then pour some more for the lady. <laughs> She's reaching back. Got a little uh, <laughs> club, club soda, soda water. You don't want to fill it up. You only want about two ounces is all you're really looking for, not too much more than that. And there we have this amazing cocktail. I'm gonna grab the ice cream. green almond ice cream so yummy wait till you taste this really cool process let's top it off with our little chunk that we saved cocktail cocktail in hand look at the camera wink um, happy Easter you guys happy Easter to your families um, happy just love in general uh, we love you guys so much we can't tell you too much right now but you better get this menu because after this week we're gonna be closing down for a while and we are going to be doing some heavy remodeling. We're going to miss you a lot, but we want to show you uh, the new chef that is running this place, uh, the new place that is being ran, and the new team that we have uh, built over this hard time um, through forges and fires um, to come to this place where we feel like we take the next step in this career and take the next step in life. So we're very excited. Uh, we can't wait to welcome you back in. And if you got this on the very last night that we were open for a while, uh, enjoy it, love it with your family, love it with your friends, and uh, cheers. <laughs>